Hi everyone, welcome back to another Wool and Witch podcast. Uh, my name is Steph and I run Wool and Witch, which is an independent yarn and fibre dyeing business in Bristol in the UK. Uh, it's been a while since my last video. I think my last one was April, so it was about three or four months ago. Uh, unfortunately, I started to struggle uh, with my workload and stuff going on outside of Wool and Witch. Uh, and something kind of had to give and unfortunately that was a YouTube channel uh, but I am back for another little update to let you know what I've been knitting and what's been going on um, and try to keep you guys in the, the loop I think <laughs> so I think the last update I gave you back in April was about the Yorkshire Yarn Fest so their uh, Instagram uh, online market uh, with the live um, yeah, it, it went really good. Um, I'm, I'm saying it like this because my boyfriend was downstairs playing on the PlayStation and obviously that ate up my internet so then uh, the live video that I was doing went really staggered and the, the sound input in the video didn't sync properly and yeah, you can, yeah, I was a little bit annoyed about about that. We had, we had words about him playing PlayStation whilst I'm trying to do uh, live videos from now on <laughs> um, but uh, other than that it went really well um, and then since then I don't know I just I just I really needed a break I was feeling uh, kind of overwhelmed with everything um, I didn't quite know what was going on with and Witch I didn't know what was going on at my workplace um, at my normal daytime job as well uh, there was just been a lot up in the air and it's been hard for me to keep track of everything um, I'm still not quite in a place where I'm, 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 I'm happy or I'm confident in knowing what's going on um, I'm trying to get there and I'm trying to sort out myself by getting more organised and things just because that's I cope better with a, a schedule or um, like a bullet journal and things uh, which I always find that when I'm starting to struggle it's because I've stopped doing those things uh, so I'm trying to basically force myself back into, into those things um, but it's still quite a lot to try and uh, get on with um, but in the meantime I have also been trying to take a bit more personal space um, and do things that I enjoy as well because I kind of dropped out a lot of those things um, trying to get ready for stuff that's going on um, so I started reading again which has been kind of nice and I've started playing video games again which is really nice <laughs> um, so back in uh, the first lockdown I bought myself a switch as well um, and I kind of I've used it like when I first bought it but I didn't really use it again till later uh, but I picked it up again recently I bought like the the Witcher 3 um, and I bought my time at Portia as well and I've kind of been enjoying picking up those games playing for like half an hour and then putting them back down which is I think the beauty of the switch um, I find when I play PlayStation um, and things like I have to set a few hours away to get on with them but the switch I can pick up and put down so it's been really nice uh, playing those so books that I have been enjoying I've just had to look them up because I've completely forgotten all of the names of them <laughs> um, even though I really enjoyed them just straight out of my head um, so books that I've been really enjoying uh, rereading or reading for the first time have been uh, things like Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor um, and that series is just amazing so I reread that one recently uh, I read Uprooted by Naomi Novik which is just a nice really good standalone book um, and oh god oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> the Never Night series by Jay Kristoff as well, uh, which I listened to as the audiobook and the narrator on that is absolutely amazing so I've really enjoyed uh, having those uh, audiobooks going on in the background whilst I've been, re uh, whilst I've been reading. 
no <laughs> having those audio books on in the background whilst I've been knitting as well uh, so they've been really good and I I don't know whilst I'm doing them I am really relaxed and it's really nice but at the same time my brain is constantly whirling with the stuff that I know I need to be getting on with uh, and I kind of feel guilty for not doing those things uh, which is kind of really annoying but that's my own uh, my own faults in not being able to relax properly I guess um, the stuff that I have been knitting uh, is literally just the one item but I've done it twice now um, so I have been knitting the Strigal uh, sweater pattern which was in Pom Pom uh, Pom Pom issue 30 so it's that cover um, and the Astrigal by I'm not even going to say the pattern designer's name because I will butcher it and it will sound terrible because pronunciations especially of names of things do not go well with me uh, I will try to find the nice big pattern there we go so I am knitting uh, that jumper there which is just a really nice uh, cropped jumper uh, it's got three quarter length sleeves as well which is what I really enjoy wearing and it's got this beautiful uh, stitch pattern around the yoke um, which is what I really wanted to do and I've done it in my own yarn so this is really nice but uh, so far I finished the body uh, and I'm starting on the sleeves uh, so there's this one so this is knitted in falling embers um, and it's DK weight yarn so it's nice and cozy but it's quite a quick knit as well um, so I'm just starting on one of the sleeves now uh, but yeah I don't know if you can see this stitch pattern there you go so you've got this really nice like tear dropped uh, pattern in there uh, and then on the uh, hem as well there's a really pretty uh, pattern I don't know if you can tell or if it's going to focus properly but it's got this like beautiful sort of uh, point going around it as well um, and I've really enjoyed knitting it uh, it's my it's only my second sweater uh, that I've knitted in a circular um, which is kind of nice because there's no seaming <laughs> um, so my first one was the one for Ant which I finished uh, a few months ago I finished that back in May time uh, and obviously then it started getting really hot in the UK and Ant hasn't had a chance to wear it at all because it's just too warm in a flat um, but I'm hoping I will have my one finished by September and then I can wear it to the Southern Wall show which is my uh, first and only show for 2021. It's the Southern Wall Show, it's at Newbury Racecourse uh, and it's the first over the first weekend in September and I'm so excited for it but I'm also starting to get a lot more stressed about it because I have a lot to prepare for it, uh, still to go um, I'm still trying to dye yarn for it ready uh, and because it's my it's only my second show and this is my first like full weekend show as well so I, I don't know how much to uh, take with me, uh, how much to dye up, how many stitch markers to make. Uh, I still got this, I'm still stressing about how to display everything as well um, but it's, it's fine. <laughs> I don't need to stress too much but I will do because it's me. <laughs> um, uh, I have a lot dyed up. I'm trying to dye about sort of four skeins of each colourway uh, and then if anybody wants any more I'll be taking uh, orders throughout the weekend as well. Um, but yeah, my first my first full weekend show and I'm a little bit terrified, uh, really excited. Um, I'm just hoping I have my jumper finished and ready to wear so that I can wear it as a little sample. Um, because I think that would be really nice, um, especially because it's in my own yarn, um, and yeah, I don't, oh, I, don't, I don't know what to say about it because I'm just so, uh, I'm like buzzing, do you know what I mean, like vibrating at a certain energy that's just like chaos, basically. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, that sounds a little bit mad, but that's how my brain works. I basically, that's the only thing that's been taking over my brain recently is uh, Southern Wilshire. Southern Wilshire? Newbury, oh my god. Um, and I've just noticed I have a big old bruise on my wrist. Don't know how that's happened. That's a really odd place for a bruise. Um, yeah, so every th all, my entire brain has basically been encapsulated by getting ready for uh, the show and dyeing stuff, making stuff. Um, I've Ant is coming with me to help out at the show. Um, I have to make a cheat sheet of information because he <laughs> has no idea about knitting or about the yarn or the colours that I dye. So I've got to make him a little info booklet so if he's on the stall and I'm not, he can still help out. <laughs> so that's like an extra thing that I have to do now as well. Um, I've also got to try and think of how to keep him occupied, like a child basically. Because um, I know otherwise he will just sit and look miserable for the entire weekend, which doesn't generally look great on a show, <laughs> on a table. Um, but that's another, that's a whole other thing that I've got to think about. That's the last thing. I think I'm gonna have to deal with uh, the other I have like a big old clipboard somewhere with a giant list of to do things <sighs> it's a lot to handle but it's the only show that's the only show that I have this year um, I, I'm looking forward to applying for more next year but uh, obviously with Covid and things it's been really hard to work out where to go what's open, who's taking people in or who's just using um, the last year's like exhibitors and stuff. That's like the big major thing that has been uh, taking over uh, everything <laughs> lately. <laughs> um, but there's other things going on as well so I'm trying to get ready for Christmas. Uh, the pop-up shop is open again this year. Uh, we closed for applications the other week um, and we've just got to go through all the applications and work out who's actually going to be in the shop this year. Uh, so for those of you that weren't with me last year, um, for the last few years with my friends I've been opening up a pop-up shop in the centre of Bristol. Uh, we'll be in the galleries again this year. Super exciting um, but that's a, a lot more stress as well. Um, I am so thankful that I am working with an amazing group of uh, other artists and women in Bristol. Uh, they have picked up the slack um, where I've been struggling to cope with things and I've been stressing out about things. Uh, basically at the start of this year uh, I, I couldn't handle any more um, so the pop-up shop kind of drifted away from me for a while and they picked up where I couldn't um, and they've managed to do so much organising and I'm so so thankful and so grateful for them and now the applications are in and I'm starting to feel a little bit more levelled out and balanced um, and I can finally come back in and pick up my side of the weight really so uh, I've got to go through the applications with the rest of the ladies um, and work out who's going to be in the shop this year uh, I'm super, super super excited to start looking through the applications and seeing what other amazing creators we have for Bristol um, but that will be opening uh, in, it's usually around uh, November, December time, so that should be fun. And I will have my yarn and things in there. I have also been doing a Christmas cast on box. So um, last year I done a advent calendar. This year I did not have time to dye up 24 mini skeins in all different colours. Um, and so this year I'm doing a cast on box instead. Uh, they are, there's some still available, uh, they, you can pick the yarn weights you want in them but they will have one full skein, so 100 grams, and then a mini skein um, in there as well, so 20 grams, along with stitch markers and then a few other little luxury goodies uh, so that you can make your own uh, perfect experience for Christmas Eve or winter solstice. Uh, whatever you celebrate basically 
uh, in the winter so there will be a beautifully smelling candle uh, and little edible goodies as well in there. Uh, I've got a few boxes left. Uh, if there's any boxes still left uh, by the time the pop-up shop opens I will probably put them in there as well. Uh, I'm so excited by that one. Uh, I haven't decided the colours scheme on it quite yet uh, but I'm feeling kind of wintry greys and greens I think. Like a winter forest I'm thinking. Um, so they're on the website if you're interested. That's the main, main lot. Um, I will have a shop update soon coming as well. Uh, that will coincide with the uh, Southern Wall show. Uh, I'm hoping to do a live whilst I'm there and then run through all the, the, the new things in the shop whilst I'm at the show. I think that would be fun. Uh, there will be new colours, uh, there are some of the um, colourways from my monthly stitch marker club going in as well and then obviously the previous designs of stitch markers as well as new ones as well. Um, yeah, like I said, we've been really busy and trying to work my butt off into getting stuff done. Um, some of the new colours, so one of the new colours is Botanical Apothecary, which is uh, like purples and reds and oranges, and this is a previous uh, Monthly Cubs colourway, um, and that will be going into the shop. And, and then I have got this one called Freedom, which is like pale pink, with really bright patches of green and then some bright patches of like a turquoise blue as well. I think that would look really really cool as a jumper or a pair of socks. Uh, so that is a new brand new colourway going in. So since April as well I've completely forgotten but I, <laughs> I basically rebranded so I've changed my logo up, I've got new packaging, um, everything comes in a little kind of special so it feels more like a gift when you get it through the post as well. So uh, the I've got new labels, which you probably saw just a minute ago, but me being an idiot completely forgot. Uh, so that is my new logo on there. Everything's kind of handwritten as well. So I've been teaching myself calligraphy uh, so I can do all of these labels. And then uh, the stitch markers as well. These are such good I'm so glad I came up with this idea uh, but they come on these cards so if you order them more than one stitch marker you'll it just come all on the same card um, and it comes in a little envelope and then these are wax sealed as well which I think is really cool um, and it just makes it more special for me to package as well rather than just kind of dumping them in some tissue paper and like sending them off um, I I feel like because I'm putting in more effort and attention, uh, they, I don't know, they, they just feel more special to me sending them as well as for you to receive them. Um, I will have them with me at the show. Uh, if you're also coming to the show, let me know because I, I really want to uh, know some people going because I don't know anyone that's going. Um, so let me know in the comment section below. Um, and if you've also made an order on the website, if you let me know, I can bring it with me and you can come and collect it from me as well. I think that's pretty much it for this update. I'm sorry it's been so so quick um, and I'm really sorry that I've been missing the last few months but I hope you guys can understand that, that sometimes you just need to step away and have a breather uh, and almost reset with things as well. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that from now on I can be a bit more uh, with regular updates and things. Um, uh, so thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed my very quick update, uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe. If you're coming to the Southern Wall Show, let me know. I would love to know who was going uh, or uh, come up and say hello at the booth as well. Uh, so thank you so much for watching. Have a good day. Bye guys.